Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. Today I want to go through another bargain hunt using Summoner Labs. I'm actually going to look at rare cards and I'm going to try and point out some, maybe five, three, four, five different cards that I'm seeing that have an amazing win rate that I happen to know from my personal experience are really quality cards. And additionally, that I think are a decent price and have an, maybe an expectation for price appreciation. So, um, Kind of the full package using data but also thoughtfulness that uh that my experience allows and unlocks so let's get into it before we do though my name is Dwayne cunningham i go by infidel 1258 you can just call me 12. drop your comments on any video and when i see your comments i will answer them at, from time to time and uh, if i do i'll send you a little thank you assuming you leave your ign so we're looking at rare cards we're on summonerlab.com we're looking specifically at rare cards this is data from all the different leagues, and that's not necessarily the most helpful. I would argue that if you want, if you play in bronze, you should be highlighting the bronze data. If you're playing in, in silver, you should be highlighting silver and so on. This is novice. This is bronze, silver, gold, and diamond plus. I think this is this differentiated data is really, really helpful, and I think it's going to give you a clear picture of where the value lies for your best investment if you fight at silver and you play the red team the data shows that the pit ogre is actually very strong 78 percent across 28 battles now that's a small sample population you always have to take that into account and so i probably wouldn't rely on that uh, data so much i probably would go like this and just back out and try a different one how about this one 73 percent 22 battles the vulgine is pretty solid though and super cheap so that would be something i might I might that might be a thread I pull up, pull at a little bit deeper because the Volgine is so affordable, only two and a half cents per copy, and because it's a low mana, making it very functional, and because the um, the card has some really interesting abilities at higher levels, um, speed, great speed, decent attack, um, the decent hit points for two mana and then vulture sorry scavenge which definitely is going to make this thing a beast by the time it gets to the the front of the line dodge and enrage this thing's kind of a kind of like this is pretty crazy actually from the diamond level i don't know i, I want to see what the data says there maybe it's not being played because it's so new and if that's the case that's like maybe grounds for even more excitement around investment um there he is vulgine look at this zero percent win rate there's only been four battles so like this is this is pretty ridiculous this tells me that there isn't enough adoption and adapt adaptivity to the players playing the game right now where this at diamond level is not getting any sort of rotation this is an amazing card at the highest levels three attack is is excellent for two mana that is excellent the speed is reasonable at three with the dodge makes it even more versatile right that's going to increase your ability to get away the scavenge is going to definitely get you up to six seven eight hit points by the time it, it finds its way to the first position scavenge is so key in those rule sets where melee from any position actually this is a oh yeah this is not a sneak or a, um, a sneak or an opportunity monster but still, this is going to be so helpful in those melee from any position situations. It's also going to be helpful in equalizer rule sets. Huge, because that scavenge is... When you give this a head start and, and start it off at 8 or 10 hit points, that scavenge really helps keep it alive because it's got that beginning cushion to work with. So, strong card for 2.5 cents. And yeah, perhaps that's relatively... You might argue it's relatively niche, because I don't know that you'd want to put this in like a first position type thing in um, in like a little league. It's too small. But it's not quite fast enough and it's, it's, it's too small. But in those contexts of melee from any position, this is a huge addition. And in the context of, of Equalizer and those rule sets, that's four different rule sets. Super Sneak. Uh, there's one that like allows opportunity from any position. There's a one that allows attack melee from any position. There's three different rule sets and then um, equalizer. So that's four different rule sets where this would be really, really helpful. And I would argue 2.6 cents is, is a ridiculous price for that sort of versatility. 
Um, so that's an, a strong consideration. Now, that's a strong consideration, but the data doesn't bear it out. You might say, well, you know, the, you, you, you came to the video and you said, look, we're going to look at data and we're going to use that to help us inform what choices we might invest in, where we might spend some money to really have a long-term financial um, opportunity. And yet this doesn't bear out that that conclusion. Like this implies that no one's playing it. It implies that it has a low win rate. Um, and I would argue that that's, that is not indicative of the quality of the card, but actually indicative of our inability to adapt and recognize that opportunity. Because there's this, there's this play style called the meta. That's like what we all do. We all rely on kind of tried and true. And we've seen it happen on different videos. And then, and then somebody starts implementing it and a few others copy and then it takes time to disseminate that strategy across the population of people playing the game and then it becomes met, quote unquote meta and um and i would argue that there are certain people who are going to recognize the 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 opportunity and intrinsic value and utility of an of an asset in splinterlands before others and it's going to take the rest of us time to recognize that 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 opportunity and that and that value. And I would say that this is probably indicative of something that's being overlooked because I do think a diamond certainly, and if you look in the gold realm, you know, same thing. Two cost, two attack, even silver, two cost, two attack with the scavenge, and again melee from any position and uh and equalizer rule sets sure it's not an everyday card it's a niche card but man that is very significant the amount when anytime the damage ex is equal to or greater than the mana cost that is an indication that that card is quality and so i would argue vulcan is something special and we probably should be looking at it more closely both from an investment standpoint for long term like three four five years from now but also from like a utility standpoint and trying to improve what you're doing and how often you're winning looking at cards like that and utilizing them more wisely so that's interesting and that and and again i think that's the number of times that's being played is in my opinion indicative of not of the quality of the card but of, of of how we slowly adapt to the changing landscape of assets in the game so we're looking at let's i like focusing at silver league as kind of a benchmark and looking for you know key investments at silver league because silver is where a lot of people play silver therefore isn't is, is going to give you lots of rental opportunities in the future because you're going to have a population of players that are going to be able to draw on that card and make use of your card and even gold players can rent your silver card and find a lot of use and utility in it <coughs> So for that reason, we use silver data as like a starting point. And then in certain situations where we see something that grabs our eye, we start to probe and look like, well, what is it doing at gold and silver and diamond and champion and all that stuff? So Mushroom Seer is obviously no joke, but the, see the cost is just too significant. Also Javelin Thrower is amazing, but again, the cost is quite significant. Perhaps you'd want, if you were playing at bronze or silver, you could justify paying one BCX or, or five BCX to get the lowest level appropriate for that th level. This is a really, really excellent card. Um, and it's just so fast and it does, uh, you know, a good amount of damage in that piercing. I really think it's great at level at, at level four where it's going to get that third attack at 11 BCX. So you'd probably 15 bucks to do that. This card is probably worth your investment um if you're if you're in silver uh but and and for a long-term investment these are worth considering like one bcx of the mushroom seer 11 of the javelin thrower for the because of their utility but the price makes them less of an investment and more of a utility so there's two reasons why we buy a card one long-term investment price appreciation really and the other is like utility today and helping you win. These are gonna provide utility for sure, but they have less of a multiplier opportunity, less of a price appreciation prospect than a card like Volgine that is pennies and can therefore 10X easily um, just because of limited demand eventually coming to the card. So these cards are not in circulation and there is a good amount of desire to have them and therefore the price goes wild if volgine ever gets to a place like that you can bet three cents is no longer 
anywhere near the price. We're talking, you know, 30 cents is very reasonable for, for a, a decent card. And we'll, time will tell if the meta grows in that direction. But you're never going to see the same multiplier when the price tag is 13 bucks as compared to pennies. That's that's why these are probably really useful. But they're not necessarily the greatest investment. Um, Dampier Infiltrator at the silver level is going to get that second melee at the 25 BCX level. I would say that that is a necessary card. I, if you play at silver, I think this is an absolutely necessary card. And I've been buying up this card a lot lately because I will add gold and and um, sorry at the gold foil. Uh, as well as the regular foil edition because high win rate decent battle uh, data now that sh i want to see that be higher that, again i think that's in part because most people don't rush out and buy the newest card they're just trying to make do with what they've got maybe you're hoping you're going to get this card for free by playing and you probably will in several months from now um, but if you want to rush out now and get five cents per BCX and get 25 of them, you're going to immediately change your sneak attack game dramatically going from two attacks, two attacks a turn, two damage per attack, three speed, very reasonable. You're going to just transform your sneak attack power for four mana. Guys, that's a really powerful card. And let's just look at the data at other levels on that one. Um, gold, 55% win rate, 60 battles. 68% win rate, 70 battles. And yeah, at every level, it's got a solid win rate. Not bronze, really, but bronze, is it's only got the one attack. So silver, gold, and diamond, this thing is 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 already winning for people. And definitely, you guys, you should, you should invest in this before... Well, here's the thing. Take your time with it if you want. But if you want to have maximum impact now for minimum investment, cards like this that are relatively cheap, just pennies at a, per BCX and that are going to immediately move the needle in terms of your utility and your win percentages this is the this is the sort of card you're looking for this is the sort of card that will will be versatile because it's dragon um and so i would strongly say this is a card for both utility and long-term investment so i'm going to call that like two really we talked about volgin we talked about dampier i feel equally confident actually i feel more confident about dampier because it's dragon meaning it can work with any splinter it's um it's uh it's got it's stronger it's just stronger like i mean they're relatively the same but that double strike is substantially um like just so much better and this thing can attack from any position due to sneak whereas this one needs certain conditions to be met where it can add that usefulness um and just interestingly the Silver Shield Assassin is very similar, right? It's got that double double attack, sneak attack, seven mana versus four. Uh, if you play Dragon and you run the Life Splinter and in conjunction, and you did both of these, I think that would serve you well. I think that would really be powerful. And then really your opponent better bring some thorns or you, they're going to be done. What else? So cheap cards that have high win rates. I mean, these are amazing cards also. I've been actually really starting to like the Gargoyle Devil. The fact it's not... So, first of all, the price tag is reasonable, right? It's giving a good amount of archery damage. Like, I don't like it at the lower levels. Let's see, bronze, it has... Whoa, it has 57% win rate of bronze. That's probably in conjunction with with Sloan, I would, I would bet. Interestingly, no. Best teammates include the Prismologist, the Flamesmith, and the Dampier Stalker, which means that this card is being run with a variety of teams, Death, Fire, and Life. And uh, that's really, really interesting. It's Yeah, this would serve Sloan well, uh, but obviously it's working, it's working well in other con contexts also. This is a very substantial win rate at Bronze. That's really, really impressive, and it's a good amount of games. So bronze is doing well, silver it's doing well at every level, except for diamond. And I would argue at diamond it's it's the hit points are our problem for it, but I still like it in some contexts, even at diamond, depending on the mana cap, depending on whether or not I, um, you know, magic's available. Uh, if it's not, then this can be pretty interesting because it's got a good DPS, and the. The, the armor will make it a little more resilient. The close, the close, um, 
I forget what that that's called, but the the fact the the fact that it can fire from the first position, although it doesn't have very many hit points, makes it like almost a safety net if you put it in that third or fourth position and it maybe does find its way to the first position that can be it can still get one shot off maybe two and that can change the whole you know the, your probability of victory so i like it and anything under five cents in my anything under 10 cents needs to be strongly considered so that would be one that i'd be i would be strongly that would be in my running for things i would do and the fact that it's neutral also right that just gives you the Gives you that opportunity to uh, diversify and make multiple use of one card that can that can have a, a certain type of look and approach on the life splinter or the death or the fire, or and so on. Hmm. You know, I like Naga Assassin. I do feel like this is this is a card that I just kind of throw in as an extra sometimes. So on the one hand, it's it's almost just fodder. It's almost just like a little bit. It's it's just it's just helping me fill up my mana points and and build a full squad because it's so affordable. But I I do love that it offers that swiftness at the highest level. If you play at the diamond or champion level, this swiftness is very important because it becomes one of three or four cards that you can put together to build a nightmare death splinter team where your nightmare is not going to be touched because nightmare has phase and therefore can dodge everything nightmare has seven speed and then you you come in there with a naga assassin and probably two or three other um archery units from either dragon or death and you're going to be able to contribute you can bring yourself up to 11 10 or 11 speed plus a blind you're not hittable at that point and unless they bring some serious heat of their own to counter yours or some big time nerfs to tr bring you back down to um, reality, cards like this, even though they are kind of perhaps they're almost a support monster more than anything else. They're almost a throwaway fill the rank, the back lines monster more than anything else in that specific context with a nightmare speed team. You this is part of an integral um break point for you getting you up to that 11 10 or 11 speed that's allowing you to dip dodge and duck your opponent's attack so i actually find that it's got probably does better than that for me um but you know the data at other levels was certainly reliable uh 57 at gold with 100 battles 47 at silver 130 decent at bronze and champion was look at that diamond champion actually the highest i, I was misreading the data earlier 60 percent win rate um, this thing is, is pivotal in, in, in a fairly substantial amount of battles. And I do still argue, I argue this is really affordable. You're talking like two, is that $2 and 50 cents? This card used to sell for like 30, 40, 50, 60 cents per BCX. And I think one day will again, I really like it. It's really, I think, helpful. It represents a sneak attack defender. It is also helping that those breakpoints for your your speed evasion at the first position. Strong card. So that'll be number three. Um. Okay. And we're actually this is just I'm just looking at reward cards right now. Let's let's broaden it up and see if there's other two other cards I could really find that are you know affordable and effective. I think the Silver Shield Paladin is too expensive to really truly be like one of my recommendations, but almost as a side note, I would say this is a card that most of you won't have, but that is going to be strongly benefited by the new Legendary Grandmaster Wraith. He, he has Magic Reflect at the, the gold level and above, and his the problem though is his hit points are too minimal to really stay alive long enough to kill the attacking magic monster. But now that his armor contributes to that because of Grandmaster Wraith, I would argue this is this guy is getting a buff in that process. So if you got a few extra bucks, if you're playing at higher levels, this is a card I love to own and I use regularly. Hmm. Lately, I've noticed that Verisalatia and Quid Yuff are really getting crapped on in terms of their price point. And I would argue that and I've said before, sometimes it doesn't matter what the win rate is. Like this is actually a pretty decent win rate 
at silver, 57% with 100 battles. And at gold, 63%, very respectable. Brutal at, at uh, diamond. Uh, bronze, 58%. I would argue these are these sort of win rates with this kind of small sample size is good enough to say that that price point is very reasonable. Because you have to compare... You have to compare um, Salacia with other blue monsters, and and I think or blue summoners. And when you see when the price points on those, I think that's that's it. It starts to maybe be a consideration. Like Kelia is a strong summoner, very strong, and her win rate is 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 superior. I think, um, and she she's plays way more games, so that's also making the data more reliable. So I'm saying Kelia is better, but when you say that this is like 30% cheaper, roughly. That's something to be th to be thought through, for sure. Like that's something that that's that's time or sorry that's value that you might be able to save on that one element and then reinvest other ways that allow your card, your deck, to be as effective or even more effective because you've gotten you got more summoner for less money and therefore you get other cards to contribute to that water team, making it you know um, win more than a friendle would by friendle's self okay so let's go back i'm just gonna go a couple more minutes so let's quickly try and find two more i really need to leave at 3 30 which is four minutes from now so i'm quickly looking at the price points for the in the on the indicators here this one bcx of peace bringer is so important even though the cost is there at almost regardless of level it's just a really great sloan contributor with good speed and that's one of the problems with the white team. Uh, but most of the archers are really slow. Wavesmith used to be like $15 or something crazy, six, seven, ten dollars something like that. And now for two pennies is one of my, the cards I'm just loading up on lately. Um, I don't have to say very much about it because you guys know what, what it does, why it's good. That port protect is so valuable. Um, Dispel is also helpful in many contexts. And, uh, and it does a good amount of damage. Three magic output is very reasonable. And it's practically free. I say this is a card you must have. If you don't already have it, get it. And and I would say at whatever level you plan to play at. Like if you're playing at silver, but you one day want to be a gold, buy some buy cards like this at the gold level so that you're becoming future proof with your deck. One more. Oh man. You know, you can't argue with Crystal Smith. Crystal Smith obviously being an archer works well with sloan but then it's got the tank heal tank heal is so important cards like this are relatively inexpensive right now because they're still being circulated but i mean one day they won't so don't take for granted that the card these cards are going to stay where they are now I, sh I didn't comment on the win rate at all but i just don't care like the card like this and this are two in my opinion important and and if they're being used wisely, are going to predict a victory for you. Um, Crystal Smith in conjunction with a with a with a taunt, and especially when that taunt, uh, in the case of the white team, is like a silver shield, uh, the shield bearer, with all of that armor. Where is it? It's an untamed, I think. Yeah, nope. Shield bearer with all the armor. Six armor at the highest levels, five and four at the medium and lower levels. Um, and then you throw some protects on there. A card like this with Grandmaster Wraith making that armor be void armor. And then having heals and repairs. I think we see more utility from um, and more success from cards like Venari Crystal Smith in the future. And that's just too cheap. Like frankly, regardless of whether it's got a huge win rate or not. Uh, it's absolutely imperative that you have tank heals. And... This will be a car that definitely 100% will continue to be circulated, played, rented, desired, uh, pursued. Like, just look at the battle data. 2,700 battles in the last two weeks. That's indicative of the fact that everyone's using it. Even if the win rate is relatively low, um, I would argue that that is, uh, is, is a card you need. And it's just so cheap. So those will be the five that I'd look at today. Uh, Venari Crystal Smith, Sp Wave Smith. Um, we talked about Verisalatia. We talked about um, uh, Dampier, Infiltrator, and Volgine. We talked about a few others in there too. 
but yeah, those were probably the ones that I, I would be strongly looking at now. Um, and if you needed a few BCX of something like Javelin Thrower or the Mushroom Seer, those are going to be great. Or the Silver Shield Paladin, amazing pickups. And um, that's it from the rare level. There's lots of great cards here, but those are the ones that I'm interested in and that I'm actively buying right now. I'm going to leave it there, guys. Thanks so much for your time and attention. Have an amazing day. God bless.